uh, ending this pursuit. Now, this was in tracking mode as he was getting off the freeway, but now he is now back in pursuit with, again, about a half a dozen units behind him. Not sure if those sheriff units have pulled off, but those California Highway Patrol units are trying to keep up with them in the carpool lane there to the top left-hand corner of your screen. This all originated in the Compton area at a LA County Sheriff's Compton Station. Uh, and again, has passed through Century, and now he has made his way back over to the number four lane there. So crisscrossing these main lanes as he encounters very heavy rush hour traffic, and uh, we'll see what he does here, but it's very difficult to see inside. Even the front windshield is uh, appears to be, at least from my vantage point, illegally tinted. Normally we can see right through the front wheel sh windshield at least, but very heavily tinted windows, impossible to see through there right now, and now it looks like he might be showing signs of getting off of the freeway, guys. Nothing but heavy traffic ahead. He's using any available lanes that he can, including that carpool lane, which has a few straightaways with little gaps for as we make our way further south towards the South Bay Curve. But for the most part, traffic is moving as you would expect it to move at this time of the day. Again, he's coming up on Rosecrans Avenue, continuing past, committed to the 405, using that straightaway there, CHP managing to navigate over to the carpool lane with him. And the minute he sees those black and whites in his rear view mirror, he crisscrosses and is trying to evade that unit right there, that CHP interceptor right there, trying to keep up with them despite the heavy traffic here. Again, as you mentioned, Mark, unclear how many other people are inside the vehicle or what other dangers uh, this person may pose. Again, it only came across as a reckless driver. Many times we later learn that there is more to that story or at least maybe law enforcement has more intel than we are working with. But as you mentioned, uh, still a very unpredictable situation. I'm observing a little bit of body damage on that rear passenger door. Not clear if that's related at all to any collisions during the course of this pursuit or if that was already pre-existing. But in any case, you can see him just trying to look for any gap in this heavy rush hour traffic to try and lose that SUV. There are plenty more where he came from. And as it looks, at least from my vantage point, I believe CHP has now fully taken over this pursuit. So a few less units, but a couple of SUVs and a, a motor unit right behind him, and then another SUV behind that one. So I count at least four CHP units right behind him here. If uh, history is any indication, highly likely he will look for an opportunity to exit the freeway. It just raises the stakes, though, and it, 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 unfortunately, it puts CHP in a predicament where they can't exactly match his driving. Now he's showing signs of getting off here, committing to, this is going to be, what exit is this here, guys? This is going to be, I think, let me just double check this. It could be Inglewood Ave, Inglewood Ave. All right, getting off at Inglewood Ave, coming up on the traffic light here. He's got a few a few other cars at the light with him here, getting in that left turn lane. That would put him on the northbound uh, lanes of Inglewood Avenue. Sure enough, making that left turn, northbound Inglewood Avenue. And so now he's establishing a little bit of a pattern here as he's just jumping on and off the freeway as he sees fit with traffic. But we'll see what traffic looks like here on Inglewood so far. Not too much to contend with. I'm looking out the window, and it's much lighter. He really has a lot more pavement to play with here. So we'll see what CHP does, if they maybe even have an opportunity for a pit maneuver, if they find a straightaway with enough, uh, enough room and no other traffic in the way. They may give the go-ahead for that. Certainly an option at their disposal here. They may even set up ahead of them if they can with a spike strip. Uh, they have tools at their disposal. We'll see if the behavior behind the wheel continues. So far, he hasn't been extremely dangerous, just very erratic, weaving across all those lanes. Certainly not safe, but not extremely dangerous uh, by uh, LA pursuit standards, if you will.
You stopped at the red light. Yep, stopped at the red light. That's 152nd Street, by the way. And uh, he's waiting for that right, waiting for that green light. You see the CHP units ready to uh, pop those doors open, but he's not showing any signs of, uh, of getting out of the vehicle or putting his hands out the window or anything like that. So they're ready to go right through it with him. We'll see if he blows through here or if he uh, maybe decides to pull over. You never know. It's always a possibility, uh, especially just considering how he's just sitting there obeying that traffic light. And cruising right through. Yeah, and by the way, when he was on the freeway, even when he had room to play with, he was only doing about 60 to 65 miles per hour, which again is well within the speed limit on the 405. So he's not breaking any speed records, but he's certainly refusing to pull over, and certainly they have observed some reckless driving uh, over the course of this pursuit that they were certainly extremely uncomfortable with. Now, if it is indeed just a case of reckless driving, and he continues, especially if he gets into more traffic and more high pedestrian trafficked areas, they will make a calculated decision to maybe just pull off of this one. If it continues, and this, you know, again, assuming it's just a case of reckless driving and he continues to drive relatively safely, it's certainly an option. We've seen it happen many times, more frequently in recent years, but you can see they are continuing to follow him. It is in hot pursuit mode, but it has also been in tracking mode at other points, and they may decide to use that as a tactic as well to take some of the pressure off and see if he uh, decides to uh, pull over voluntarily. I have not heard that. I have not heard that. It's a possibility. I have not heard that so far. We're only aware... A reckless DUI. Okay, so I'm being told it, 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 reckless DUI, alcohol in play here, and so that will certainly play into the decision making as well. But again, considering the driving that we're seeing, it's not uh, not the most dangerous of pursuits. They don't want to make it a dangerous pursuit if they don't have to. So they're going to follow at a safe distance here and uh, use every uh, every ounce of patience with this driver and hope that maybe he comes to his uh, senses here and just pulls over peacefully. Noticing more damage on that left rear too. So we saw some yeah, it looks like, I, I, you know, I noticed some scrapes on the right side, but now it looks like some, t if I'm not mistaken, I, is that damage, Rob? I, I push in there real quick. It, it could just be a reflection. Yeah, it looks like that tail light has suffered a little bit of a ding. Uh, again, not clear if any of this is related to this pursuit uh, specifically, or if, again, all of that was there before, but certainly they are taking notes of all of this and making sure that uh, this is worth their time and efforts. Obviously, it's somebody they want to get off the road, uh, but not every pursuit is worth it, if you will. You know, they have a lot of factors that they are working with, and certainly uh, his driving and his behavior is number one. And it looks like, looks like they're pulling over. Pulling over. We are at Englewood. Might be a female driver, I'm being told. Pulling over at Englewood. Rob, what's the cross street there? Uh, if you guys have Sky Map up, we're at 135th Street, uh, just north of 135th and Englewood Avenue. And officers, yep, Code 6, this is what they call it. Officers with their guns drawn. Officers out of their vehicles, and they're going to start barking instructions very, very uh, carefully and methodically, hoping, hoping uh, that that door pops open. Don't want to see just the window come down. That door needs to pop open completely. They can't see what's going on through that driver's side window, 
And once that door comes open, the next step, obviously, is seeing those hands in the air. So they are looking for those two things. Open door, hands in the air. Perhaps they will ask him to turn the vehicle off and drop, drop the keys. Uh, but this is, a, this is the reason, one of the reasons, why these tinted windows are illegal. Uh, it's vitally important in many situations for law enforcement and authorities to be able to have a view. It's also a safety hazard when you're driving uh, in different lighting conditions to have heavily tinted windows like that. So they are unable to see what's going on in there, and that is certainly playing into uh, the, look at this, a dog on the lab. Here comes the, the, the window rolled down. Appears to be a female driver with a dog in her lap. Uh, she is very acting like she almost doesn't even realize what's going on here. She's communicating. It looks like, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have might, maybe a closer monitor than I do. Is it a male or a female? Yeah, it might be a man. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Reaching under the shirt. The keys. Getting the keys, maybe? Preparing to drop the keys. Okay, the vehicle must be off, and he's, or a, theoretically, it could still be on if it's a remote. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it looks like he's about to drop the keys. You see the CHP helicopter continuing tight orbits around this intersection. Intersection shut down, southbound traffic getting by, but they have northbound Englewood completely shut down as they execute this felony stop in methodical fashion, giving this driver specific instructions that I think we could say at this point he is still not obeying. Here comes the passenger door. So we have a driver and a passenger. Passenger with her dog, baggy jeans. Passenger has two phones in her hand. That's not, none of this is good. He's walking away from those officers. None of this is what he is being instructed to do. Uh, I, uh, that is a French Bulldog. He's And she's talking into one of those phones. I have to wonder whether she's talking to a dispatcher or she's talking to a friend. She, she appears to be motioning that she's talking to somebody because uh, she's not letting go of that phone. Again, two phones in her hand. She's talking into one of them. There is some kind of a communication gap here. But for whatever reason, you can see them treating this very carefully as they try and take possession of that dog. He will have to be let go. Those phones need to come out of her hand. This is a very close face-to-face -face situation between those CHP officers and two people who have already been on the run from police and have not been complying at any point this afternoon. One of them at least suspected of being under the influence. Exactly right, Mark.
Well, unless he's deaf and or blind, uh, that it's, I, I mean, look, anything's possible, and sometimes there is, you know, there are situations, and we've seen them, where you have, uh, you know, uh, p p people from, who are not from here uh, not knowing what to do when a police pulls up behind them. We, we have seen that in the past. We've seen elderly uh, pursuit drivers who just were completely unaware. That does not appear to be the case in this situation. Uh, it is a clear illustration of just how precarious policing can be. And how, you know, we know that these things can turn on a dime from what appears to be a peaceful situation to something far more uh, dangerous. And in this case, they treated these two with kid love care, extreme patience, trying to communicate, trying to have a conversation, clearly negotiating to give up as peacefully as possible, not taking any rash actions and not wrestling anybody to the ground despite the fact that their hands were not in the air. There were a lot of factors here that they had to weigh out, but those two are outnumbered by the number of officers. There was no obser observation of a threat, and as long as they weren't threatening, there was a conversation. The dog has been peacefully surrendered. The phones have now been taken into custody, and these two will be off to jail to have a lot to answer for, obviously. Hey guys, so, hey there, Mark and Giovanna, getting information now from our desk that uh, she is claiming, uh, this, is, this is all per radio traffic, so uh, uh, bear that in mind, but she is claiming she is five months pregnant, and, uh, and, that, and, and, and what was that? Uh, she's having abdominal pain, so apparently, uh, I mean, it's very possible that they were just trying to get to a doctor or hospital and were spooked by these officers. I mean, it's unclear. Again, the initial report was a possible DUI, reckless DUI. Uh, if she is experiencing a medical emergency, that would, you know, could explain some of the rationale behind the wheel. We understand that the fire department is being dispatched, so an ambulance is on the way, uh, and what this could be if those reports are true, is it, it could be a medical emergency. Now, even when there's a medical emergency in the vehicle, you still need to pull over for the for for for, for the police, or at the very least, uh, I mean, you you wouldn't be going up and down the 405 freeway. You would expect they would have pulled in to a hospital by now. But in any case, that may be what we're dealing with here, guys. Once again, as you continue to follow the situation with us on abc7.com and our ABC7 24-hour streaming services, this is Chris Christie up in Air 7 HD as we monitor the termination of a pursuit, a pursuit that started near Compton, ending up on the 405 freeway, uh, has been on and off the freeway at various points near LAX, and now we find ourselves at Inglewood Avenue and 135th Street, where police are taking a couple into custody uh, they were refusing to pull over for the longest time, but eventually did indeed pull over. And we understand that there are reports that that female there on the right is possibly experiencing abdominal pain. She is claiming to be five months pregnant. And uh, what we may be witnessing here is a medical emergency. Uh, in any event, this pursuit has come to a peaceful conclusion. And now it is up to uh, the ambulance to uh, arrive and check her out and eventually they will be placed into custody or they are in custody and they will be uh, again questioned as to why they refuse to pull over so we're going to continue to bring you these live pictures from Inglewood as this pursuit has come to an end.